If the Praxis Elementary Education Mathematics 5003 exam has you worried, then this video will help you gain confidence for exam day. Hi, I'm Selena, a teacher with 20 years of classroom experience and a test prep expert with study.com. I've helped many educators prepare for their certification exam, and I'm here to share strategies and practices that will boost your confidence. Let's jump into some sample questions for the Praxis Elementary Education Mathematics 5003 exam and stick around till the end for important exam tips. Let's get started. A teacher asks students to estimate the sum of 389 plus 612 by rounding to the nearest hundred. Which estimate should they expect? A, 800, B, 900, C, 1,000, or D, 1,000 plus zero equals 1,000. So if we take 389 and round to the nearest hundred, we're gonna underline the three, look to the right. Eight is higher than five. That means we're gonna round its neighbor, the underlined number, to 400. And we're gonna take 612, underline the hundreds place, look to the right. One is four and below, so that means the underlined number will stay the same. We now have 600. And if we add them together, zero, zero, and 10. The correct answer is C, 1,000. If we look at A, 800, this shows that students may round down incorrectly. B, 900, students might round one number up and the other down. And D, this is a misinterpretation of place value notation. A third grade teacher asks students to use base 10 blocks to represent the number 432. Which set correctly represents the number? A, 400s, 310s, 2 1s. B, 300s, 4 10s, 2 1s. C, 4 10s, 300s, 2 1s. Or D, 400s, 2 10s, 3 1s. Let's walk through the process of elimination. B, students may confuse 10s with 1s. C, place values have been misordered. D, they have swapped out the 10s and the 1s. If we look at this visual, it correctly represents the number 432. You have four hundreds blocks, three tens, and two ones. So the correct answer is A, four hundreds, three tens, and two ones. Which fraction is equivalent to three fourths? A, six eighths, B, two fifths, C, four sixths, or D, nine sixteenths? The best way to find an equivalent fraction to 3 fourths is to take 3 fourths and multiply the denominator and the numerator by the same number. We'll start with 2. 3 times 2 is 6. 4 times 2 is 8. The correct answer is 6 eighths. B is choosing a fraction with a similar denominator. C is incorrect because it is an incorrect simplification. D is incorrect, randomly multiplying the numerator and the denominator by different numbers. A teacher is helping students understand division by using the problem 24 divided by 6. Which representation best supports conceptual understanding? A, showing 24 objects grouped into six equal groups. B, writing the algorithm 24 divided by 6 equals 4. C, Memorizing multiplication facts until 6 times 4 equals 24 is recalled. Or D, using a calculator to divide 24 by 6. B, writing the algorithm skips conceptual understanding. C, relies only on rote memorization. D, technology bypasses number sense. The correct answer is A, showing 24 objects grouped into 6 equal groups. Concrete manipulatives help students understand division as grouping. Which of the following represents the expression five more than twice the number n? A, 5n plus 2, B, 2n plus 5, C, 
n plus 5 times 2, or d, 5 times 2n. In this problem, it's important to look at key concepts, such as more than and twice. So we have twice the number and five more than. We will be using addition for more than. We can see that the correct answer is B, 2n plus 5, twice the number, 5 more than. A is incorrect because it's misordering the operations, C is incorrect because it's misinterpreting wording, and D is incorrect because it's multiplying incorrectly. What is the next term in the pattern? 3, 6, 12, 24. A, 36, B, 46, C, 48, D, 50. If we look at the pattern, we can see that it doubles each time. Three times two is six, six times two is 12, 12 times two is 24. A, 36 is not doubling. It is adding instead of multiplying. B and D are just random arithmetic progression. The correct answer is C, 48. If we take the last number, 24, and multiply it by two, we get 48. A teacher gives students tiles showing two, four, six, eight. The teacher asks them to predict the next three numbers. What skill is being developed? A, place value understanding. B, identifying even numbers or patterns. C, multiplying decimals, or D, solving word problems. A is incorrect because they are not mastering place value. C is incorrect. It is overcomplicating the problem. D is incorrect. It is not relevant to word problems. The correct answer is B, identifying even numbers or patterns. Students have to recognize that the rule is add two to each number. Solve for x. 5x minus 7 equals 18. A, 3, B, 4, C, 5, or D, 6. We're going to take our problem. 5x minus 7 equals 18. We need to get x alone. So the first thing we're going to do is eliminate the 7 by adding 7 to each side. These cancel each other out. And now we have 5x equals 25. We still don't have x alone, so now we must divide. x equals 25 divided by 5 is 5. The correct answer is x equals 5. A triangle has side lengths 3 centimeters, 4 centimeters, and 5 centimeters. Which type of triangle is it? A equilateral, B isosceles, C, scalene right, or D, scalene obtuse. Let's work through the process of elimination. A, equilateral, means all three sides are the same. Three, four, and five are all different. B, isosceles, means two sides are the same. None of the sides are the same, so it is not isosceles. So the answer must either be C, scalene right, or D, scalene obtuse. Scalene means all sides are different. Three, four, and five are different. Let's check to see if it is a right or an obtuse triangle. To check if it's a right triangle, we use the Pythagorean theorem rule. If the square of the biggest side equals the sum of the squares on the other two sides, then it's a right triangle. The largest side is five squared. So we'll take the other two sides. Three squared plus four squared equals nine plus 16. Nine plus 16 equals 25. Now we must see if five squared equals 25, which it does. Since three squared plus four squared equals five squared, then it is considered a right triangle. The correct answer is C, scalene right. A class votes on its favorite fruit. 
Results. Apples 12, bananas 8, grapes 10. What fraction of students chose apples? A, 12 over 30. B, 12 over 28. C, 12 over 20. Or D, 12 over 18. The first step is finding out how many students there were in all. We will take the totals, 12, 8, and 10, and add them together. 12, 8, and 10 add up to 30. So there are a total of 30 students. Now we need to look at how many apples were chosen by the students. 12 apples were chosen out of 30 students. Now we take the part, 12, and the whole 30. 12 over 30. 12 over 30 students liked apples. B, C, and D are incorrect because they have the wrong total for the whole class. The correct answer is 12 over 30. 12 out of 30 students enjoy apples. What is the area of a rectangle with length 8 centimeters and width 5 centimeters? A, 13 centimeters squared. B, 20 centimeters squared, C, 40 centimeters squared, or D, 80 centimeters squared. The best way to solve this problem is to create it a visual. Area is length times width. We plug in eight for length and five for width. Eight times five is 40. The correct answer is C. 40 centimeters squared. The other answers are incorrect. A is just adding the sides, B is multiplying the wrong numbers, and D was confusing it with perimeter, sum of the sides. A spinner has four equal sections, red, blue, green, yellow. What is the probability or the chance of landing on red? The spinner has a total of four sections, that is our hole, and the red takes up one part. So there is a probability of one-fourth of the spinner landing in the red section. A is incorrect because that means one-half. That would be two out of four, but there's only one red. B is incorrect. This would mean only three sections total, but we have four. D would mean there are five sections total, but again, we only have four. The correct answer is C, one fourth. One red out of four total. A second grade teacher gives students pattern blocks, hexagons, triangles, trapezoids. She asks them to combine shapes to create new ones. What concept is being reinforced? A, fraction equivalence. B, area measurement. C, geometric composition and decomposition, or D, probability of outcomes. A is incorrect. Fractions apply later, but not here. B is incorrect. No measurements were done. And D is incorrect, as it is irrelevant. Students learn how shapes can be built from or broken into other shapes. Students record the number of steps they take from their desk to the door. Data. 12, 13, 11, 12, 13, 12. What is the mode? Mode is an important math academic word in this question. Mode equals most frequent. So looking at the data, you need to look at the numbers that appear most frequently. Our choices are A, 11, B, 12, C, 13, D, 18. A and C are incorrect. These numbers only appear twice. D is adding numbers instead of finding the mode. The correct answer is B, 12. The most frequent number is 12, as it appears three times. The perimeter of a square is 36 centimeters. What is the length of one side? A, six centimeters. B, eight centimeters. C, nine centimeters, or D, 12 centimeters. Perimeter is adding the sides, side plus side plus side, or taking one side and multiplying it times four. 
We can take the number 36 and divide it by 4. 36 divided by 4 is 9. So each side of the square is 9 centimeters long. The correct answer is C, 9 centimeters. Now that you've practiced a few sample questions, let's take a closer look at what this part of the Praxis Elementary Education Mathematics 5003 exam is really measuring. This competency focuses on your ability to understand and apply fundamental math concepts such as place value, estimation, fractions, patterns, algebraic reasoning, geometry, measurement, probability, and data analysis. The questions are designed to assess not only your procedural skills like calculating area or solving equations, but also your ability to recognize the conceptual foundations behind those procedures, such as using manipulatives, modeling division, or identifying number patterns. As you saw in the practice problems, strategies like process of elimination, using part over whole for fractions, spotting context clues in word problems, and testing patterns step by step can help you avoid common mistakes. Keep practicing these approaches and remember, you're not just being tested on math facts, but also on how well you can think through problems and support students in building their own understanding. Thanks for sticking with me through some practice questions on the Praxis Elementary Education Mathematics 5003 exam. I really hope you feel more confident and ready for exam day. For more practice, check out our Praxis Elementary Education Mathematics 5003 playlist. And for even more detailed practice strategies and customizable study materials, head over to study.com and check out our Praxis test prep course. Those who use study.com boast a 92% pass rate. Our courses include full-length exams, hundreds of authentic practice questions, and short, targeted video lessons, specifically developed based on the latest test updates. With our resources, you will know exactly what to expect on test day. Like this video and subscribe to the channel to get all the latest Praxis test updates. And please leave your questions and success stories in the comments. We would love to hear from you. Thanks for watching and happy studying.